KF40. See if it goes. So this is a pump cart. It's basically a turbo pump backed up by a big scroll pump, and you use it for evacuating uh, doers, vessels, just getting the vacuum down low enough that air won't cause a problem uh, by freezing onto things as things get cold. So this turbo pump had sat for a long time and we were trying to figure out what was going on. Basically, we were pulling um, a reasonable vacuum, but not nearly as good as it should have been. So Hugh and I did some debugging and what it turned out is the problem is that there's a solenoid that's hooked up to power and what it's supposed to do is close a valve if the power fails so that you don't lose vacuum in the event of a power failure. But the solenoid wasn't opening all the way and so we couldn't really pump through it very well. So what we did was just remove that solenoid valve because it's, it's only useful if there's a power failure and um, we could uh, work around it. So we took it out, put it in, and then we got the turbo pump cart to pump, up, to pump out the doer with uh, really no problems. See how low we can get, maybe turn on the turbo. Alright, spinning the turbo. Yeah, so all the problem was this isolation valve here that was not triggering. Now we got it going. That I have no idea what that's doing. I guess monitoring vacuum pressures. Maybe it was running the OGS. Maybe. We're already down to six times ten to minus two. Fifteen thousand RPM. Yep. Yeah, that's the Stanford Research one. I've used that software before. It's a trip into the late two thousands <laughs> computer technology. Already down at ten to minus four level. This thing's gonna work. Ready to do the honors? Go for it. First uh, pump down in six or seven years. Gonna open up the valve. All right, we're pumping down. 310 tor at the moment. We'll get down below about 10 tor, and then we'll turn on the turbo pump and let it pump all night. All right, after like six years, turning on the turbo pump. 
stage error. I hit measure. No, now it's going. Start. 23 watts. We can go to um, starting. You can see the 1 amp, 6 kilo K RPMs. And it's coming up. And we should see it go soon. And we'll come back tomorrow and see where we're at. So I think we can just leave the pump on uh, as we start the cooling and start playing around. I think we should just move this. Uh... <coughs> the backup gas handling system. This is a. Uh, this is to you put this in the nitrogen cylinder, but like in a modern lab, this would 100% be made out of 3D printed plastic. Here, it's made out of wood. I mean, this is rare use of wood in the uh, physics lab. All right, this is a PDR 2000 dual capacitance manometer, which means pressure gauge. So. One of these was broken, it wouldn't boot up right, so we're going to replace it with this one I have around. All right, this is what we're working with. This is the dilution refrigerator. So the fridge is here. Basically the way it works is um, you jam a mixture of helium three and helium four into the mixing chamber, and then it uh, condenses into a liquid. Then you pump on that liquid with a turbo pump. You go through a, a scroll pump here, and then you recirculate it all in, in a loop. The problem we have now is this fridge has been sitting here for six years, so that means that things will have outgassed and there's going to be air in all these lines. And the problem is when you put air into the dilution refrigerator, like down here, it um, will freeze and plug the dilution refrigerator and we won't be able to cool down. So before we can start cooling anything, we need to evacuate all of this system so it's got a high vacuum in it. The problem is that this helium-3 is incredibly expensive. It's right now living in these kegs, but there's some of it probably between the circulation pump and the keg. You, this, you can't really get the gas out of here. So there's some good gas in here that we want to save. So what we'll probably try to do is pump everything from here over, not pump this, and then hope that this cold trap, which is a liquid nitrogen cold trap, will condense that mixture out before it gets in here and uh, plugs up the fridge. This may take multiple attempts uh, to clean the mix is what we're essentially trying to do. Um, so we got to the problem is we have no instruction manuals for this fridge, so we're just trying to make this up as we go along. All right, so we're going to try to get all the pumps working, and we're going to see what our vacuums are, Then we'll try to get everything working, and eventually we'll use this circulation pump and the turbo pump to try to pump everything out uh, of the fridge. Read back to these guys, but these are, uh, these are like interlocks of the pumps, so they are not... They're inner, so that, that's like a solenoid valve or something? Uh, so this is just a gauge that's somehow, I think it's controlling a, a, a relay here. Okay. okay. Um, so, is, uh, I'm guessing because this is currently trying to reset this. So, shuts off the output of the 760 controller. So, if the output of the 760 controller. So, the question is do we just blow it out? Do we pump it externally? Yeah, maybe I think that's maybe we need to externally pump it. Move the pump cart over. Okay. I think the pump cart's done its job, so we'll close that off. We can close this one right here, and then you know, pretty good to go. We can come back and check this later and see if the vacuum's really at all. You know what? This doesn't work. Oh, 
it, it works. It was just very open. Okay. Let's, let's let it scroll down slowly. I need to turn the turtle on. We'll put that up there, we'll, we'll come to the number. That'll be actually quite easy. All right, we got a plan. You ready? So it looks like this is uh, our pump out port 20. So in, in a normal operation, there's mix over here. You don't want to mess with it. So we're going to keep valve two closed. We're going to keep this valve closed on the um, circulation, front of the circulation pump. And then we're going to pump basically this entire part here. And so we'll open, we'll put the, a turbo pump on num this 20 basically, then we'll open four, seven, and one, and that'll let us just pump this entire section out and get all the air out of there. Then when we're done with that, we'll be able to start cooling. This little horse up on turbo. Yeah, why don't you try that? Is it a three way switch? Could you go to the, is it at the north position? So this may have, this may have been broken when they used it last time. We can run in the loose refrigerator without the turbo pump. It won't get as cold. It will work. If your scroll pump has good, it is in good shape. It will work. Um, I'm wondering if we should try to get this. This computer is clearly the control computer for this thing. We should think about trying to get it running. Our next one is tick controllers. I'm just turn this back off to the light off. No, the light's still flashing. No, the um the fans. I don't know if it's supposed to be on, but it's definitely not. Okay, here's our problem. We've got a turbo pump. It's an important component the screen shows that it's not working and it won't turn on. It may have an interlock to keep it from turning on, but you can see the screen over here, nothing. So we're not sure what's going on there. We also now have a measurement on the still pressure, which is 840 Tor, which is above atmospheric pressure, which is 760 Tor. And, um, it's pumping down really slowly, which means there might be some kind of impedance that's keeping it from pumping down, or we may be pumping out a different volume through a leaky valve. It's something we got to figure out. All right, so it looks like the still has an interlock that's keeping the turbo from turning on. Um, we're still not sure why it's pumping down so slow. It should be a straight shot. We're thinking there's might be leaking through the backside of the circulation pump. so. He was going to go try to turn that valve a little tighter. Over time, the rubber and the valves can valve seats can wear out and they can start leaking. So we're going to check that. All right.
We're now gonna go in the core to see if the circulation pump is on. I think I have now managed to thoroughly annoy Hugh with filming, but this is a price for content. Is it on? Uh, no. uh, actually, hang on. It's like power. I guess maybe I should turn it on manually here. It's possible. It should just have a switch, yeah. Uh, no, no, we just lost power. So <laughs> the light was on for a second there. And then I tried to turn it on and then it lost power. So something. Turn it off? Uh, and then... now, now there's no power anymore. Oh. Well, um, that's weird. You want to go. Like all right, so we've got, we're pumping out the entire dilution refrigerator. We've got all the pumps working. We think we understand the interlocks. Now we just let it pump out for a couple hours and then we'll turn on the pulse tubes.